Hi, I'm Charlene Collins Freeman, and welcome to my tutorial on capturing fast and slow observations in our sketchbooks. In this quick tutorial, I want to explore two different ways that we have of observing the world around us and capturing it in our sketchbook. With this approach, the first step is to do a very quick watercolor of a first impression of our subject. For this demonstration, I chose a picture of a cheeseburger. And I'm not worried about penciling in a drawing at first. This is really a fast observation watercolor. I loosely try to match up the colors I see and the shapes I see. I'm doing this demonstration in my Stillman and Burn Beta Series sketchbook. This sketchbook has watercolor paper and the size is 12 inches by eight and a half. This quick watercolor is the fast observation part of our project. I'm using watercolors to capture my first impressions. There's not a lot of detailed observation or slow assessing going on. And you can see I'm creating my watercolor pretty quickly with just the impressions of first the biggest shapes I see for the buns and then these green little bits that are poking out in the middle that are pickles and lettuce. I touch the yellow ochre of the top bun while it's still wet and so my lettuce is creeping into it. I just tap it out with a towel. And then I go back to painting. Very quick impressions, another layer of yellow ochre for the bun. My watercolor paints are Daniel Smith paints. There are a lot of great brands of paints out there, but I've used Daniel Smith for over a decade, and I really enjoy painting with these. I've put them in one of my favorite sketchbook palettes, which is the pocket palette available at arttoolkit.com. They come with empty wells so that you can squeeze in your own favorite paints. After another glance at my cheeseburger, I painted in the shapes of the tomatoes. Next, I mix an orange to paint in the shape of the cheddar cheese. This really is the idea of a fast scan visually of your subject and then painting it on your paper without too much fussing. What I love about this exercise is that later, once this is dry, we'll come in with a pen and draw a much more detailed drawing of the same subject on top of this one. Our ink drawing will not follow these lines. It'll be more precise and more observed. In this first part, I'm not only observing quickly, I'm also painting quickly. When it comes time to draw on top of this, I will observe slowly and I will draw more slowly. And it becomes a lovely juxtaposition of the two different ways we have of capturing our world around us. You can see here my watercolor is the vague representation of a cheeseburger, but it's not this specific cheeseburger. And when you look quickly and then you capture it quickly, there's not a lot of connection going on with the subject or even with the process of painting or drawing. Sometimes we just don't have a lot of time to really slow down and take our time observing, drawing, and painting. And this can be fine for a moment like that where you're just doing a quick capture. But generally, I don't find this kind of quick observation and quick capturing to be really satisfying. Okay, pretty much our quick watercolor is done and it's time to let it completely dry before we can come back in to do our drawing. 
After a 15 minute break, my watercolor is dry and it's time to do a slowly observed drawing. I'm using a Micron Pen 08 and my approach is to do a continuous line contour drawing. I will definitely slow down and do a lot of slow observation with my reference. The temptation as I do this drawing is to avoid trying to get my ink drawing to somehow line up with my watercolor. That's not the point of this exercise. In a sense, I need to really ignore the watercolor painting that I did earlier. Now that we're done with our fast observation part of this sketch, we're getting into the slow observation. And it's a wonderful way to really see and feel the different experiences of taking your time observing your subject. If you've never done a continuous line contour drawing before, you might want to check out my other video where I give you a demonstration on how to do that. Continuous line encourages you not to lift your pen once you've started drawing. That means you might overlap some of the lines you've already drawn if you need to get back to certain areas. Of course, if you pick up your pen by mistake or on purpose once in a while, that's okay. Just put it back down where you were when you stopped drawing and start drawing again. But as much as you can, train yourself not to pick up your pen once you've started a continuous line drawing. This helps you stay focused on those edges that you're capturing in your slow observation and slow drawing. It also helps you create these smooth, confident drawing lines rather than short little hesitant lines that result from picking up and putting down your pen over and over again. This time with my slow observation, I'm taking my time trying to figure out proportions, relationships between these shapes. For example, where are all these sesame seeds? They're accumulated at the top, kind of spread out as they come down to the side of the bun, really taking my time to look at my subject and capture it. I'm not interested in such accuracy that I'm going to count the seeds or anything along those lines, but I definitely want to capture the sense of how many seeds there are on there. And then what all these little shapes are that are poking out through the mayo, the ketchup shapes that are coming out from under the tomatoes. I really want to try to capture all that without getting sidetracked by my watercolor painting that's underlying my drawing. The video is playing in real time, so you can see just how slowly I'm observing and drawing my way through this. I'm going to speed up the video now since you've understood the process that I'm using. We have a challenge in drawing because we're trying to recreate a three-dimensional world on a two-dimensional piece of paper. And if we overthink it, we end up drawing very stiff drawings that are unsatisfying. That's because at that point, you're trying to create a drawing as if it were an intellectual problem to be solved, but it's actually a visual problem to be solved. And the way you solve it is through observation. While traditional continuous line contour drawing helps you slow down with your observation, get your eyes to run along the edges of your subject and capture the outline with your contour drawing. And it helps you really slow down and observe. I find that this fast, slow juxtaposition is an additional element of fun. It captures our two different experiences of seeing and of drawing, one quick, one slowly observed. And by layering the two approaches, one on top of the other, you end up creating an offset watercolor and ink sketch. With the watercolor poking out where you were inaccurate 
and the drawing pulling you in. Even here, I'm no longer doing a continuous line drawing to get all of my seeds in. I'm still doing observation. As I draw these in, I'm really looking at my reference photo to see where they are accumulated, where there might be two or three bunched together, where they're spread out more. The more details you're willing to slow down and observe and then draw in, the more satisfying your experience will be. You could also choose a really detailed, complicated subject. Maybe you want to draw a tree and paint it really quickly, sort of like a green lollipop, and then come in and really take your time drawing all the leaves and branches. Or you can paint a house and then come in and do a detailed architectural study on top of it. I find these fast and slow observational sketches to be a really fun way to capture my world in my sketchbooks. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and as always, thanks for joining me.